Video equipment rental costs paid for by peep code screencasts. All right, so this is Packet Foo, ninja style. Uh, Mid-level packet manipulation for Ruby. Um, I, hello, I'm Todd Beardsley. Um, I'm a security researcher uh, most of the time, um, which means I do a lot of uh, attack and defense research and application uh, at Breaking Point. Uh, we make test equipment for uh, routers and security devices mainly, things like IDS, IPS. Um, how many people here have ever administered an IDS device? Well, a couple. IDS is intrusion detection. Um, it's a thing that tells you that you just got owned. Uh, IPS is intrusion prevention. It's the thing that tells you that you almost got out. And so I work a lot in testing those guys. Uh, and I'm a Ruby newbie. I've been doing Ruby for under a year. Uh, I started doing it because it seemed like all the cool kids were doing it. So uh, as soon as I started, uh, I noticed that there was no reasonable way to do packet manipulation in Ruby, uh, network packets. Um, so. I'll get to that in just a second. Uh, you may be asking yourselves, uh, why forge packets uh, when you have perfectly wonderful OS uh, stacks that do all your packet handling for you? Well, like I said, I test network equipment, so often I have to make crazy packets uh, that don't make any sense and you'll never find in the real world um, to see how security devices interact with them, to see how routers interact with them. Do they fall over if you send them things with like ridiculously large or small or lots of them or all that? Um, same deal with security equipment. Security equipment is supposed to prevent attacks, and so if I can do weird TCP reordering, do I screw up your IDS? Um, and you also may want to do packet captures uh, and sanitize your packets, like by massively rewriting IP addresses or MAC addresses or something, because you want to share it, but you don't want to share uh, who you are with whomever you're sharing it, which is kind of common in the security community. Um, by the way, this is my first language conference uh, and certainly my first Ruby conference and it's very different from security conferences. Uh, I see a lot of like open notebooks. You don't usually see that very much at security conferences because people are paranoid that you know, you're on an untrusted network around a bunch of strangers. They're gonna totally jack your stuff. <coughs> Apparently you guys don't mind though. Not DEF CON. Not DEF CON. <laughs> Our badges are much like Yes, and uh, much more forgeable. <laughs> um, so why would you want to snip packets on the wire and not trust your applications to do it for you? Well, you may have connectivity issues and you might want to see uh, what's going on uh, at a packet layer. Um, this is my favorite thing to do with packets uh, at this level is device fingerprinting. I want to know you know, you may be saying, I, I want to know like how many Macs are in the room or I want to know you know, what your web server really is. I mean, you may have an IIS banner or you may have an Apache banner, but you may be lying and the packets will give you away in almost all cases. Um, and finally, for application reversing, um, if I'm dealing with an application that maybe doesn't have an RFC, like all of Oracle stuff, uh, and I want to know how it works and how it looks on the wire uh, so I can re-implement it, um, which is mainly what I do, um, when I'm not doing security work, uh, I need to look at the packets uh, as they appear on the wire. And so why Ruby? Well, like I said, I just picked up Ruby. It's, it's super rad. Um, so all the usual reasons, uh, Ruby is tray object oriented, blah, blah, blah. You guys all know this. The threading is easy. Um, may not be the greatest, but it's super easy. Um, and Ruby is cross-platform uh, for reals, and so is my stuff. Um, cross-platform on all the things I care about, which is Linux and Windows. Sorry, Mac guy. Uh, but of course, Ruby is very cross-platform on Macs as well. Um, but there is nothing, sort of, uh, for doing this kind of thing in Ruby, which is a bummer, because Python has Scappy. Anybody use Scappy at all in Python? Zero. Uh, Perl has raw IP, which is kind of similar. Um, uh, C has uh, libnet, um, which is kind of the standard uh, for packet forgery. Uh, but there's nothing 
for Ruby. But wait, there is. Uh, did I just reinvent the wheel this last couple months? Um, there is Scrooby. Uh, Scrooby was released in April of 2007. Uh, it's a uh, port of Scappy for Python. So if you're like super happy with Scappy, um, then you may like Scrooby. The syntax is the same and very alien and bizarre. Uh, there's Racket, um, which just got released uh, this last March. Uh, the guys at Matasano Security use Racket for their uh, protocol debugger. Uh, they use uh, this thing called Ramble, and it's built on Racket, but it's just brand spanking new. It's great. Um, I love it a lot. Uh, it's bitstruct based, um, which uh, can be kind of a bummer for some applications. Also, Racket's uh, syntax is a little verbose, um, but it's it's good. Um, so, but they released as I was writing it, so we'll we'll duel to the death, I guess. And this goes to the. There are 18 zillion different implementations of the same thing in Ruby. Um, so I wrote Packet Foo. Uh, I wrote it in September of 2008. <laughs> I did check-ins uh, yesterday uh, for some bug fixes. And uh, I started this uh, back in Mar March, yeah, early March. I posted to the local Ruby users group, Arctan said, hey, is Scrooby really the uh, state of the art for packet manipulation in Ruby? And there were cricket noises on the mailing list. And, yeah. and then I replied a couple days later. I'm like, OK, well, that's great. Um, that's good for me, because then I can write this and learn this Ruby stuff. Uh, so there's that. And uh, Packetfu is bin data uh, based. Uh, anybody here use Bitstruct uh, or bin data for anything exciting? Yes. Um, Bitstruct is, has a superior interface, I think, but bin data is more robust for the things I need it to do, so that's why I went with it. Um, and so we'll talk a little bit about the design. Um, in its guts, I use PCAP rub uh, because PCAP rub um, uses libpcap. It's ubiquitous. Uh, if you're doing this kind of thing, uh, libpcap is what drives things like Wireshark and TCP dump and TCP replay and all that jazz. Um, I did not use Ruby PCAP. Uh, don't ever use Ruby PCAP. If you ever want to copy this stuff or re-implement some other crazy packet stuff, don't use Ruby PCAP. Um, you will Google around for Ruby lib PCAP for that interface, and you will find it immediately. It's like the first two pages. Uh, but it hasn't been updated since 2001. Uh, so it doesn't use lib PCAP's uh, packet injection stuff, for example. Um, the threading model it uses is blocking. Uh, it kind of sucks. It was a good first effort. Um, PCAP rub uh, is the best kept secret in Ruby packet manipulation. You won't find it on your first couple pages of Google. Um, and it's actively maintained uh, as part of the Metasploit project now. <laughs> Yay, Metasploit. <laughs> uh, so I went, I needed to uh, build some binary structs uh, in, in uh, PacketFoo. So I wrote my own, as everybody does when they first learn languages. I'll write my own. Uh, I wrote Packet Factory. Um, it's my uh, factory methods. I'd also just bought a book on Ruby object-oriented design. So I'm like, oh, great. I can use like 16,000 different designs in this thing. Uh, that was a huge mistake, and it will not see the light of day. Uh, quickly abandoned it around April. Um, then I went to Bitstruck, because lots of people use Bitstruck, and the interface is really rad. Um, uh, but unfortunately, with Bitstruct, uh, if you have things like variable data lengths or you have things like uh, optional uh, headers and data, optional tokens, Bitstruct kind of, you have to do a lot of crazy stuff to get around that. Uh, bin data does all that natively, however. It has the array type, it has, uh, you know, read until the end of the file, stuff like that. Um, it's very featureful, it's a struct meta language, uh, and it's actively maintained at RubyForge. Uh, and the guy is really nice. He takes patches very quickly. So this is kind of what Bitstruct headers look like. This is from the PacketFu documentation. Uh, it's all Ardocified. Um, so we can see here um, we have things. This is a TCP header uh, as seen by Bitstruct. Or I'm sorry, bin data, not Bitstruct. Um, we have things like TCP source address, which is a uh, UN16 uh, desk address, sequence numbers, acts. Um, these are all fairly typical data types. You know, this is a 4-bit field. This is an 8-bit field. The, the ability to just easily do uh, bit, 
bit widths is uh, hugely useful when doing things with networks. Um, but then you can also have custom ones too in bit, in uh, in data. Like I have this uh, TCP flags right here. Uh, TCP flags. That's not a fairly normal data type. Uh, TCP flags are one bit each. Uh, so in uh, bin data, you get to define your own uh, data type, which is bit one, bit two, bit three. And this is the order that all your flags show up. And so uh, this makes it really easy to implement this kind of, uh, this kind of application. I strongly urge you to take a look at bin data if you're doing anything library or uh, binary wise. If you're parsing files, bin data is great. All right, where am I at here? OK, so Packafoo uh, creates these packet headers um, using bin data stuff. Uh, I collect them up into packets, which are uh, mostly normal Ruby objects. Um, and that's pretty much how Packafoo does, does its magic. Um, there's a lot of smarts in there about what packet types look like. There, I have a bunch you know, basic ones, and I'll have lots more soon. Um, but I, I noticed that not a lot of hands went up when I asked, who does IDS? And so uh, anybody used Wireshark lately? Yes? OK, about, about half. Um, I won't bore you with like the OSI layer model. Um, besides, it's wrong. Uh, so <laughs> it's wrong for me, at least. Uh, so this is a very quick diagram of how Packafoo deals with packets. Uh, think of all these as objects, all these boxes. Um, this is an ETH header. Uh, it's the Ethernet header. It has things like a source, a dest, a proto, uh, and a payload. The big blank spot there is payload. <coughs> Pardon me. I have a little bit of a cold. Uh, in the payload, we have things like IP headers. Uh, IP headers themselves have things like version, header length, uh, uh, time to live, stuff like that. Um, they also have, what do you know, payloads. Uh, bodies, really, is how I, how I call them. Uh, and on that TCP header, uh, we have, on the IP header, we have a TCP header, which has things like source, dest, um, sequence numbers, act numbers, flags, junk like that. Uh, and that tiny little box is the, uh, the body of TCP headers, where you'll see things like the SSH header, and then you'll see data. Um, uh, I don't go that deep, generally. Um, I don't really care too much about application level protocols. I care a lot about this, like one through three in this, this model. You can do application protocols in, protocol, in uh, Packafoo. Um, it's not too hard, uh, but I'll get to that in a bit. Um, all this is encapsulated in a packet. Um, and so that's kind of the outermost object of this, of this uh, design. Uh, packets have things like namely headers. Um, stores headers in array. Header 0 is ETH header. Header 1 is IP header. Header 2 is TCP header. Um, so you can access those and read and write them and all that jazz. Um, packets also have payloads. Uh, this payload is really the body of the TCP header. Um, this is, is almost always the, what you want when you're talking about give me this packet's payload. It's giving me the outermost payload. Uh, so that's built in. And whoop. Oh, damn it, now I gotta go through my whole, hang on, yeah. Um, you, I see you have TCP headers there. Can you also work with UDP packets as well? Absolutely. Um, right now I have implemented uh, TCP, UDP, ICMP, ARP, IPv6 kind of. Um, I think that's it for now. Yeah, that's gonna be most of what you're gonna see on the internet anyway. <laughs> Um, one thing to talk about is this little star packet. Um, this packet gets its identity from this guy in here. Uh, whatever is the innermost uh, header uh, determines the kind of the nature of this packet. Uh, so when you're when you're making things in in uh, PackFoo, it will take the uh, it will take its type from the data. So here, I'm, I'm getting a little bit ahead, but it's kind of important. Um, I have this file, uh, ICMP packets in this file. Um, so I'm, I'm, I chuck those all into an array. This is just a binary array. It's not very exciting. Um, packet array. So this is the, let's see. This is the first one. Uh, this is what packets look like. Um, but that's not very useful. So I can say like ICMP. Equals 
well, we'll say unknown packet, because I don't really know what it is, equals uh, Okay, so it gives you that. Um, so you can say things like unknown packet inspect, you know, which is what the, the I've overloaded inspect. I might change that. I don't know yet. Um, that may irritate some people. Um, but you can also say things like, you know, what class is it? And it knows. Um, you can go through the data and it figures out. It's like, oh, well, this. 14 bytes, it looks like Ethernet, and uh, where do we have it? Here, and I know it's IP because of this guy, and I know it's ICMP because of, I think, this guy right here. Oh, here, this guy. This O1 says so ICMP. So that's kind of how packet generation, where I take binary, like arbitrary binary data from the wire and turn it into these handy little packets that you can do all kind of cool stuff with. Yeah. Are you using another library that does kind of a layout like that, or did you just? I just write. I just wrote my own method to do it. Um, I think it's called a hexify. So and that works for any binary data. Um, so oh good. Uh, so the typical packet interfaces you'll see are things like 2s. Can I do this? Yes. No. Yes. OK. So I'll do things like 2s. 2s just gives you the binary, um, you know, because maybe you want that. Uh, payload will give you just the outermost payload, like I talk, talked about. Uh, this is uh, the ICMP payload. Um, you can see this is a ping, probably, because this guy right here kind of gives it away. Uh, inspect, we already uh, showed. It gives a hex-readable packet dump. So if you're used to working with things like Wireshark, TCP dump, and you're a giant nerd like me, then you can read that really easily. Um, and peak, uh, every packet type uh, that, that uh, ICMP packet class uh, carries along with it its own peak method, which gives you uh, summary data. Uh, it tells you kind of what's, what's going on in a very basic way. Uh, this tells you that it's C for ICMP, because I is already taken by IP. Um, it's 98 bytes long. It's from this guy. It's ping. It's talking to this dude. Uh, and the IP ID, uh, which in this case is 0. Um, and that works great for, for lots of stuff. We can do something like P. Uh, whatever, we can say, say packet equals. Come on, give it to me. Packet new. Uh, you know, so we say that. So he tells you what that is. That's kind of neat. Um, how you talk to the network is through PCAP rub. Um, you can uh, transmit and receive through a network interface. Uh, this requires root privileges because. You know, only people who know the root password are allowed to shoot things over the network arbitrarily. Um, uh, you can read and write files uh, using a standard libpcap format. Uh, and you know, so I handle the libpcap file format. So you can say things like packet 2f. There's a default set already for out. And uh, open. Uh, Oh, so here it is. Um, this is kind of why I haven't done a whole lot of work on the presentation, because I use Wireshark like, constantly. Um, and so if I want to spot check things, I can just write everything to a file and let Wireshark do all the parsing. But this tells you how, how it all looks. So uh, can you take those Wireshark packets, save those out in PN, and Packet Google will read them in? Yes. Yeah. Um, that, was the, yeah that was step one on getting those ICMP packets, was reading back in uh, some ICMP packets that were those packets were captured live from Wireshark, saved to a file, then read in with Pikafu. And so they're pretty rad. Where's my thing? Here we go. Uh, so that's kind of a requirement. 
Um, so creating packets, we already kind of touched on this, um, but generally the idea was is that I wanted something simple. Uh, I wanted something hash driven rather than positional arguments. I like hash arguments a lot because they tell you what, exactly what you're doing. Uh, and, it ha and it should be readable by someone who uh, can read Ruby or Python or Perl or something like that. Um, as far as I can tell, there's, there's nothing else out there that kind of fulfills these three requirements. The racket, is, racket is fine, play with the racket. Um, this is kind of the uh, sequence of events on how to build a TCP packet. Um, you know, TCP packet equals packet blue new, blah, blah, blah. You can set things like source address in a human readable sort of way, uh, dust port. Um, you set flags by turning it, to, turning it on uh, with one. Um, you can set options uh, with uh, human readable options there. This is uh, an op, nop, sack OK, and the line. And that gets translated into the binary equivalent. Nops are 01, uh, sack OKs are 02 and an 0202 because it carries along the length, and EOL is 0. Um, and then recalc, uh, this is something that if you're going to be sending packets on the wire, you're going to have to do a lot uh, right before you send them. This is what your stack does. Uh, recalc fixes up checksums, uh, header lengths, stuff like that. Uh, and then 2F sends it to a file. Um, the default is temp out. Uh, I assume you're on Linux when you're doing this. Uh, but you can, you can override that easily. by just uh, That's just a, a one argument 2F file name. Uh, I have utility functions, uh, just a couple. Uh, I have uh, their singleton methods. I like singletons. I don't care what Eric Phoenix says. <laughs> So I have the who am I function. Um, it turns out, as when I started doing this, uh, I couldn't figure out how in Ruby to get like return address information, things like what's my IP address, what's my MAC address, um, without having to do some shelling out and looking at files and all that jazz. So I wrote, I wrote my own. Um, what who am I does is let's see if we can kind of demo that. I hate giving it away this early. Let's see if I have another one. Do I have another one running? No. Damn it. All right. All right. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Pack of voo. Um, <laughs> what who I'm not. So that's like the splash screen for the pack of voo shell. I'm sorry. You have to do that because um, Unless you have ASCII art, network security people are not going to pay attention to this at all. They'll think, hey, it's in Ruby. It must be Rails. So, no. I use ASCII art. I don't have any cool Mackey things. Um, let's see. Oh, and zero. Oh, work, you mofo. That's right. I gotta be. Oh, I gotta be root. Oh no, you saw my password. It's all dots. That's right. Get to owning me. First person who makes. <laughs> yep, there you go. That's me. Um, all right. So this is this is what wire truck looks like if you've never seen it. Um, yeah, look at that. Um, so what we can do is do. Damn it! It's not working nearly as well as I wanted. Okay, so. Thank you. So, god damn it, there's way too much UDP on this network. Who am I? I don't even know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm the very bizarre. No, I, I got, I got some. <laughs> so. Uh, when PacketBoo starts, it, it launches that Who Am I utility. And what Who Am I does, he says, all he does is he sends out a uh, packet here, this guy right here. Let's stop. Um, this is my Who Am I packet. And you can see, oh, get bigger. OK. Um, this sends a, a, a fake UDP packet uh, over the real socket. Um, so when you're doing things with the real UDP socket, obviously you have to know things like, the, the OS knows things about you know my Mac and my IP, so he sends it out to this address. This is a non-writable address. Um, it's INA reserved, so no one will hear it. Um, 
And he says, Peck Fu, who am I? And he sends a little, little salt thing to avoid getting poisoned. Um, so he sends that out, and then I have a cap, and then I set up a capture device. I capture this packet, and I read it, and I'm like, oh, well, that must be me, because it matches. So that's kind of how I get around it. But you've got to be root, unfortunately, to do it. A little bit of a bummer. Uh, I also have uh, ARP, uh, because I don't want to rely on the OS in a lot of cases, so I'll, I'll do my own ARPing. Uh, and I've re-implemented ARP in this way, so you can do things like you know, uh, ARP table equals you know, brackets and array, and then you just ARP everybody, and you can keep an ARP table that way. Uh, I use a lot of monomic functions. Monomic? Mnemonic? I don't know. It's a cool comic, though. Um, you know, you send a packet via packet inject, uh, or you can just use the 2W. Uh, 2W will pick up your default interface. Um, if you know that your default inter interface is wrong, which is often the case when you're on wireless, uh, then you just say 2W interface. It's easy. Uh, 2W is for wire, by the way. Uh, and packet boot write uh, does 2F for to file. Uh, we talked about it a little bit earlier. Um, this framework also, is it a framework? Oh. <laughs> This uh, packet view makes packet dissection really easily, Re really easy. Uh, you can say things like new UDP packet payload equals old TCP packet payload. So presto changeo, uh, your data is now, in a, now UDP-ified. Um, oh, good. That's cool. It's very cool. In Racket, hang on. Not, not to dis I like Racket. I like my Osano guys. Um, in Racket, this is about 20 lines. Uh, Mine one. Uh, I also have this notion of packet flavors. I haven't really filled this out too much yet. Um, I expect to uh, fairly early on, probably by, I don't know, it'll take forever. Um, if any of you have used NMAP or POF, you know, that kind of knowledge is always, always uh, evolving. Um, but it allows you for things like realistic defaults. Uh, so we can say things like, uh, get over here. We can say things like uh, you know, packet equals TCP pa packet new eh, flavor windows. And this looks like a Windows packet. Believe me, it does. Um, we could, you know, we say like L packet is flavor Linux. Yay. We can say L packet equals. No, they're different. Okay, so so this will let you do things like um, you know impersonate other OSs that you might not be. Um, you can do like really nonsense kind of uh, combinations. You can put flavors on TCP, IP, Ethernet. So I can say like I'm Mac hardware and I'm sending out Windows packets. Oh, I'm crazy or running bootcamp or whatever it is. How hard is it to? Create? Uh, right now, it's very hard. <laughs> um, not hard for me. Uh, I need to uh, work on that a lot. This is something I just kind of threw in in the last minute. And this is actually part of the reason why I wanted to start this in the beginning, was to be able to determine. I want to be able to create and uh, fingerprint you know, uh, remote devices. So I may end up ripping off like what POF does, which is passive, passive OS fingerprinting. I may be able to you know, get away with just parsing out how they think things are, and then I don't have to do any work, which is great. Um, Nmap well. has a file. It's got a big, big file, and people contribute to it all the time, and it's kind of sort of okay. Um, yeah, the, the details on, in it are great. Uh, the format is a little bit annoying to work with, but uh, that's coming soon. This is, by the way, this is version 0.03, I think. Uh, so. This stuff is not filled out too much. So ready for no, absolutely. <laughs> um, it's, it's downloadable right here. Go download it right now and attack everybody. Don't, don't, don't attack anybody. <laughs> um, so you can do this on, uh, on all these different headers. Because uh, th these flavors are, are important because uh, you'll have devices like Nessus uh, that scans your network to look for hosts and then you may have some kind of overarching framework that, that says, like, I detected this attack on this host, but it was an Apache attack on an IS server. Um, and so that's kind of why security devices care about what, who people are, so I need to care, too, who people are. 
Um, it's also really handy uh, doing that kind of, well, I'll talk about that later. All right, packet manipulation. Um, I've mentioned Scappy a couple times. Scappy is a great library uh, for writing uh, packets in Python. Uh, if you don't mind the like weird Byzantine syntax of like IP header slash TCP header. And I, I don't really like it very much, uh, um, which is why I wrote this. Uh, but it was written by this guy named Philippe Biondi, and he says it best in his slide. This is his slide. Um, decoding is when your device says, I got you know, this, this particular kind of packet from this particular port. Uh, interpreting is port 80 is closed. Um, you know, this pretty much sums it up. Uh, I don't want to do too, too much in the way of interpreting, at least on the library level. Um, you know, that, that's for whatever application happens to use PacketFoo. That's their job. Um, you know, if you want to say that reset means that, you know, the port is closed, or you might want to say that reset from port A means that you have a machine there. I mean, who knows? I don't know what you're doing with it. Uh, I don't care. Uh, so I have some decoding options uh, in PackaFoo. I think we covered this already a little bit. Uh, you can present the d data as a binary string. Um, you can detail the ICMP fields. So you can say things like, I still have my ICMP packet? No. So you can say things like ICMP equals uh, the packet new, whatever. And you can say, how do I do that? It, uh, point it this way? Yes. So this tells you uh, every field, what the value is, uh, usually numerically. Um, so you can make decisions on it. Uh, and that's all straight and data stuff. Um, and you can detail all the fields uh, since the ETH header field contains everything. So you can say, well, I really want to know everything about this packet in this you know, hash of hashes format. And so that tells you what it is. Um, I got really crazy with the Ethernet stuff because I like Ethernet. I don't know why. I wrote a like, chat and where's program using ARP. So you can chat with your coworkers. Uh, or you can figure it all out. We already uh, went over this whole parsing business. So uh, parsing really just takes some binary string and tries to figure it out. If there's failbacks on every level, so like if I get some packet I've never seen before, then I just call it a question mark and give you the data. That's it. Um, packet injection can happen one at a time with the 2W that we talked about. Uh, or you can pre-generate a whole array of packets uh, and then dump them all. Um, you can do this quickly, uh, or you can do it slowly. If you want, uh, I don't. It's all this is non-blocking. I'm not waiting for responses or anything like that. Um, so this is like this packet array is some array of packets that I generated earlier or something, and then I'm going to send them out on this interface, and I'm going to be nice, and I'm going to wait one second in between. But I am not required to be nice. Uh, packet sniffing uh, lets you do. It's all non-blocking. Um, you can filter things with the Berkeley pack. Packet filter syntax. Uh, again, if you've used Wireshark or Snort or TCP dump, that's all going to be pretty, uh, pretty standard for you. Uh, comes with capture objects. So you'd set up capture objects, and you can save the strings that you get over the network into an array uh, for later. Um, you can save them forever if you want. You write them to a file, do whatever you want with them. Um, so you can keep a history going uh, that way. Can you look at the capture, uh, the capture array while it's continuing to capture? Yes. Yeah. I have a specifically. I, I implemented a show live function, uh, which is similar to pcap or uh, pcap rub show live. Uh, pcap rub show live really does just show you live, and it'll screw up your terminal if you use it. Uh, mine does a little bit of interpretation. Uh, you, show live basically uses that peak method, so okay. it's all line by line. We'll see it in a minute. Uh, and then we saw the Packet shell. Uh, it provides easy interaction via IRB. I live in IRB. I love IRB. I don't care what anybody says. It's the greatest. Um, Python had a really nice shell. Uh, IRB is nicer, I think. Uh, uh, Scrooby, is the, which is the Ruby port of, of uh, Scappy, he, he comes up with his own shell, which is great, good for him. But I don't know why, because you have this wonderful shell right here. And you can do all kind of crazy stuff with it, like histories. Um, and you can do real-time network hacking via IRB, just like in the movies. So you can totally swordfish, you know, whatever database you want. 
<laughs> and so now we have demos. Hooray for demos. So when you, when you say real time, how many packets per second will it park? Ballpark? Uh, no Parsing is playing. slow. Sending is fast. Um, this is mostly my fault uh, because my code is awful. Um, it's all up there here. You can read it and say, you have no idea what you're talking about. Um, parsing will get faster uh, when I get smarter about parsing and you know, making better decisions. Um, I'm not going to answer that question quite yet, though, because we're going to get to that in the demo. Um, so these are some example applications that ship with it. Um, I'm going to ARP the hood. Uh, this uh, ARPs the local neighborhood. I'm not attacking you, promise. Don't turn off your machine. It makes my joke less funny. Um, it matches up OUIs, which is the first three bytes of your uh, MAC address uh, to a vendor list. Um, and I can, so now we can guess. Guess, how many Macs are at RubyConf? And we can uh, take guesses as a percentage. You know, 60%? 260. 260. Wow. <laughs> so. 282 people here. All right, so we all have our guesses. Um, and we'll do this right here. So uh, this is what it looks like to so do Ruby ARPUD. And this is my OUI uh, reference file. You don't need to have your own OUI. You can download the one from IEE if you want. You just leave it off. Uh, but it takes forever because it's like 100K. Oh, my password is on everything. Man, I'm so secure. So I'm going to be ARPing around here. Uh, this takes a minute because I don't do anything fancy like threading. Oh yeah. Um, I'm not right now. <laughs> um, you know, li lying about your ARP. You know, especially if you're going to say, "Hi, I'm the router." Um, I get all your Gmails then, uh, which kind of goes back to what I said at the beginning. This conference is really bizarre for somebody who comes from a security conference history because nobody checks their Gmail <laughs> during talks there. So hey, look at that. Tons of apples here. Uh, this is one, one network. Um, networks changed yesterday to today, by the way. Uh, there used to be 255. There used to be class C's. Now we're class B's. So I only picked the one because it's kind of gets a little bit pokey if you do more than that. But in, in this local network, we have uh, crap loads of Apple. Um, we have a Gemtech guy. You won't see me on here because you can't really ARP yourself. Um, we have this dude, Han Hai Precision, blah, blah, blah. I don't know what that is. Um, but yeah, and the cool part is that uh, I added this note. Uh, this is the iPhone OUI. So if I have like cool iPhone O days, uh, I could, there's a lot of iPhones. And they tend to be. There's a lot of iPhones anywhere, right? So there's all the, and then we can see everybody else is ARPing. Um, that's great. So everybody else is ARPing around. It's wonderful. Everybody's getting to know each other. I just got to know everybody. So, <laughs> so that's our pod. Um, you know, and like I said earlier, I mean, this is all well. This is all native Ruby. Um, I don't have to shell out for any of this stuff. I don't have to use the ARP utility that comes on everything. I mean, you could do the same thing, which is like normal command line stuff. Uh, but where's the fun in that? I mean, it's hard to make, you know, Railsy things for your command line. Um, uh, IDSRB is something I wrote. Um, this was another reason to write it, was to see how quick, how short I can write an IDS, uh, intrusion detection system. Uh, I wrote it in four lines. Uh, and uh, I just put snort out of business. Sorry, Marty. And uh, Marty's friends here. So uh, this is the IDS, and it's wrapped. So we'll demo that. Ooh. Uh, what did I want to do? Oh, OK, so this is the IDS one. So. I already have it in my, there we go. Well, first, let's see, so we do work count, oh, IDS, okay, nothing up my sleeve, it's four lines. I um, actually don't like this one too much, right? so I rewrote it um, to version two, which is six lines, kind of, I didn't do it in five lines or less, like I promised, but four lines and six lines, they both work. Um, if you really want, you can show them both, but I'm just going to show the one, unless there's like a big hue and cry that I'm a big liar. Um, so for this, I'm going to remember what the hell my syntax was on this. Uh, this is my, this is the four line one. Uh, let's see. 
And yeah, I had to cheat a little bit, make it like totally unreadable to fit in four lines. Um, I don't do anything <laughs> silly like semicolons or anything like that. I don't do that. Um, so this guy, he looks for these attack patterns in network traffic. Um, any packet that starts with gotcha is you know, evil. Any packet that ends with owned and a bunch of exclamation points is evil. And uh, anything that starts with a hex four followed by a bunch of not nulls um, is evil. Uh, and that last one is actually the real, uh, a real-ish signature um, that, that detects SQL Slammer, which maybe we all remember. I don't know. Um, Super Bowl Sunday, hooray. Uh, I looked through, do, 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 do. So that's great. Um, if I find the SIG, I'd talk about it. So do I have any configuration list? Yes, I have to tell you what my interface is. So do, 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 do. Oh, yeah, and password cached. So there's that. So I got my IDS running here. Let's shove this up a little bit. And there's my slammer attack. Uh, I also wrote slammer in Ruby, um, just for pr this purpose. Uh, it's it's somewhat neutered. Uh, it won't it won't kill anybody probably. But if you're running IDS right now, hopefully you fire. Um, I'm going to attack 10, 20, 30, 40 uh, on WLAN. Oh, and I need to get my password. It's such a bummer. There we go. And oh, hey, look at that. Um, you know this guy attack. Sorry, you can't see it when I point there. This guy attacked this guy. Um, this kind of demonstrates also like some problems with IDS because I faked my IP address because with Slammer, you don't need any callback. It's a one packet attack, so you don't know who I am. So that's pretty neat. Um, and it gives you a date and tells you what signature it hit. So this is, this is IDS. This is basic IDS. And Snort is hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of lines of C. Lines not. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> um, Snort is a better IDS, by the way. That has more than one three signatures, and <laughs> it does things like TCP reassembly and all that. So, okay. Uh, and I also wrote Xscan uh, for this. Uh, so Xscan is super quick. Um, I can scan remote class C in six milliseconds last night, uh, three milliseconds during the last talk, uh, and I don't use threads to do it. So it's pretty neat. And we'll demo that. That's that's the most exciting one. So uh, an X scan is basically when you send out uh, fake ACK packets. So TCP three-way handshake. I want to talk to you, SYN. You say, cool, SYN ACK. I say, great, let's go, ACK. Well, if I send out an ACK without the SYN and SYN ACK part, um, the other guy's going to say, I don't know who you're talking about, reset, boom, and he'll send you a reset packet. This is a great way to find out if machines are online or not. Um, if they're not you know, filtering, if they not, don't have some firewall that says, I'm not expecting this act, so I'm not going to say anything. Um, people who do that are naughty, by the way. You really should send out resets. Um, so, that's, so that's what that does. Um, and so this is a great way to figure out you know, who's alive. Um, it does. You get a, and if you can do it in six milliseconds, I mean, the entire internet is within reach. Um, I have a friend of mine who's interested in this. He's writing this distributed scanner using this, um, which is something I'll talk about in a minute after my demo. Uh, do, 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 do. So, this takes a little bit of time to set up, if you don't mind. So, all right. So I say cap equals. Capture new uh, phase. Uh, cap show live. So we'll do this for a second. Um, this is what the show live does. Um, I'm not doing anything right now. I'm just looking at traffic. Um, there's all the there's all the packets, and it's all native Ruby. It's all get, this is all getting stored in a uh, in an internal array. <laughs> Uh, so you can do things like cap save, you know, cap, right, you know, I want to see what the third packet was. There it is, white. All right, so clear. Oh, you can try. What, Ruby doesn't have good memory management? <laughs> you could, but I can clear it out. <laughs> uh, okay, so. So I'm going to set up a filter here. Oh, this is the sending right so. So I'm going to say. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Good. Glad you 
guys have a use for it. <laughs> uh, and then I'm going to do the same thing over here. I know, watching me type is very exciting. Ow, oh, goddammit. Nindy? It's not a... My shift key's kind of wank up, so... And... I'm sorry? Um, you can turn promiscuous on and off uh, with some wire cards or wireless cards. Promiscuous uh, really means turn off all my sniffing, which is irritating because some of the earlier, older wireless cards they they disallow promiscuous, but they still have the bit. So they're trying to stop you from doing that. Um, my card it doesn't it doesn't really make that much of a difference. Uh, it does make it, it, it you can do promiscuous. Um, that's mostly useful for I don't know like shared media where like other weird things are in place. It's it's pretty uncommon to set anymore anyway, because of that whole problem there. Okay, so this dude is desk port, and so this guy's going to be source port. Yeah, ah, that, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so these guys are rocking, they're waiting for packets. And, oh man, I totally forgot. This sucks on this network. So what I got to do... This is the big coup de gras. So we have these LSRC networks. They're great, um, but they filter a lot. So I'm going to go over to this Linksys network, because that's, that's mine, right? I mean, I have that at home, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is, I don't know why cities like, put in all this money for like, metro area networks, because we have the de facto one. It's the Linksys network. <laughs> <laughs> so. And, and free public Wi-Fi, don't forget about that. Yeah, that one looked a little sketchy, though. That was a peer-to-peer uh, -peer one. <laughs> I don't recommend that one. What does that? Because I see that everywhere. I'm sorry, what? So you can, you can, public Wi-Fi, you can set up one on your Mac. <laughs> yeah, right. But I mean, that SSID, free public Wi-Fi. Is it that the default? Because I don't, yeah, you, you, you can't do anything with it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Do do do. I just see that SSID everywhere. All right. All right, so now I'm on a, a more reasonable network. Uh, that'll let me do this. And yeah, see, I even wrote a note to myself. Switch to link six for hack scan. <laughs> so, so here's the hack scan. Um, oh, oh yeah, yeah. I gotta set up this guy too, so you'll believe me. Um, so, do 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 do. This guy will he'll send. We'll do both. Okay, so here's Wireshark. He's looking at the same traffic. Um, but he's boring because he's all in C. All right, so these guys are going send, receive. Okay, the receive is really what we care about. Um, so let's move this little bad boy over so we can see what's going on. Come on. Oh, yeah, I brought my awesome mouse. All right. So nothing's happening. I'm pre generating all my packets. Um, and so I can dump them out all at once. Uh, you'll see that this. This presentation is slower than what's really happening. Um, and so I ask Scan, this is one of Google's networks, uh, so they don't mind. Because <sighs> they'll give me ads or something. Um, this 209, 85, 165, Class C, it's, it's out there. Um, they don't really have any machines listening on port 81, who knew? Um, but they do send crap loads of resets, uh, which is what this is. Um, so they send bunches of resets uh, to all my acts. Um, I don't know why, because it's clear I'm being evil, uh, because I have different source ports, um, same desk port, and I have the same sequence ID, so that's unusual, and I have the same IP ID, so clearly this is generated traffic. Why are they responding to me? Well, like Google, they don't care. So, so that's it, so that's awesome. Um, just to talk about the speed thing, uh, one of my big failures right now is I don't have any really good time stamping, because I don't want to rely on Ruby's clock. Um, I'm still trying to figure out how to deal with that. Um, but here's all my acts that I sent out. I start at, you know, time zero. And we go down to, that's going to take forever. Do, 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 Where's the end? Oh, there we go. 
So that's 256 addresses uh, in three milliseconds. So uh, pretty pleased with that. It takes longer to get the replies back, of course. Um, the first reply doesn't come back until you know, 120 milliseconds later, because he's got to go all the way out to Mountain View and come back and get a cappuccino because he's from Mountain View. Um, and then the last one is like a second and a half, almost a second and a half later, but a second and a third, I guess. Um, so if you were going to do this with like Nmap and stuff, Nmap will tend to keep track of this thing. Um, the cool thing about about uh, this kind of distributed model where I have, you know, I send things and then I receive things over here, is that there's no reason that these three windows here have to be on the same machine. Um, I can send my, I can forge my source IP over here, um, and as you know, machine two, uh, machine two will then pick up the resets. And as long as he knows like what to look for, like hey, my static IP uh, ID, uh, he'll pick up the right resets, and. Uh, so you can do like distributed port scanning, which is right. So get back to my dumb presentation. There we go. So yeah, Ruby's super quick at this kind of thing. Um, but uh, the presentation is still kind of pokey. Uh, the unknowable future for PCAP, or I'm sorry, PACAFOO. Um, it's very likely to be incorporated in Metasploit. Um, I, I, I know HD fairly well. And uh, neither one of us are terribly happy with Scrooby and uh, the usefulness of it in Metasploit. So this is, this is almost certain to uh, replace it. Uh, so if you use Metasploit, you'll get it anyway. Um, other things, I need to be able to send a packet and then wait for a response. Like, I think distributed is great, but some people, when they send us in, they expect you know, a Synac back. I don't know. Um, so I need to be able to implement that easily, like, I don't know, I got to come up with some other verb, like, I don't know, poke or something. Um, and that's leading me down this road of a more complete TCP reassembly. Um, I've avoided this so far because, you know, I don't want to be snort. Um, it may be up to, the, I, I've kind of considered the, this part to be the application developer's problem, not my, the library writer's problem. Um, but I imagine uh, after a couple months I will cave and do it. Um, Scooby, the Honeypot, Honeypot Demasker. Uh, this is on the Lone Star RubyConf website. Um, I really wanted to demo this. I didn't get it done. Sorry. Um, but it's cool, it, uh, conceptually. Um, you know, like how Old Man Withers uh, is really the Phantom of the Carnival. They rip off the mask. Well, th this, this does that, but for Honeypot. Um, they're like, ah, oh, we thought you were an IS, but haha, you're really a Honeypot trying to catch my awesome Odes. So. Um, <laughs> So I don't want that. Um, this kind of thing is also really useful for things like asset management in a network that you may control the network, but you don't control the devices on the network. So you might want to actually know, like, well, how many apples do I have? Do I really have to care about this latest like iPhone O day? Uh, you can do this. You can zip around super quick and get a good idea of like what your real uh, infrastructure looks like. And of course, I have to refactor it till for the rest of my life. Uh, write some reasonable test cases, because like I said, I live in IRB, so my test cases are, does it work? Yes, it worked that time, must work forever. Um, <laughs> and all that other jazz. So, and that's all gonna happen after RubyConf. Not, uh, not now. Uh, again, you can get it here at uh, codegoogle.com. Um, I don't have it on Ruby 4 Jet. This is mostly a uh, way to get good hits on Google, and then I'll move it. Um, back, I'm done. Uh, any questions or comments about how rad I am? <laughs> so, I mean, the application for it is, I mean, I'm, I'm a security guy, so I only think about it in security terms. I'm sure there are other applications for it. You can do event-driven stuff this way, kind of. You can just, like, have your fake stack and say, okay, well, he wants to talk to me, so I'm going to go ahead and, you know, talk to him from this guy over here. Ha ha. I think so. Oh yeah? So I do, um, I, I don't do any really like high level protocols yet. You know, these are the ones I do. I, I absolutely, it's very high on the list is get like the damn protocol, you know, writing part really easy. All I want to be, like all you should have to do is just drop your, you know, sip.rb in, in, you know, your, your externals, your lib externals or something. And it should just work, right? So that, that doesn't work that way right now. Um, I have to do a bunch of like 
sleight of hand in order to figure out like the flavor and all that jazz. So, um, but this is this is what I support today, and uh, that's my website, PlanBeatSecurity.net. Um, and so that's it. So, thank you. Thanks, man. My pleasure. Anybody else? Don't go yet. Wait. Oh wait, there's more. We're out of time. We have no. You're lying. We have four minutes. I'm amazed. Cool. Well, thanks very much, and uh, see you around. Video equipment rental costs paid for by Peepcode Screencasts.